So we understood that in SAP ECC, we have these challenges, like we have the problem with the speed, the user interface reconciliation, and we need to invest a lot of amount on the hardware, okay, because SAP was only available on premise when it comes to SAP ECC till 2011. Now with SAP S4 HANA, okay, the speed is no more a problem because of SAP HANA database. With SAP HANA database, the speed problem would be solved. With SAP Fiori, user interface problem will be solved. With simplified processes, reconciliation issue will be solved. And with cloud option, the problem that was related to the hardware cost will also get resolved. So in short, SAP S4 HANA provides you speed, it provides you better user interface, it provides you simplified processes, and it also provides you the option to go on cloud. Okay, and then we understood this SAP HANA entity. Okay, so within SAP HANA, we discussed why SAP HANA is fast. The reason is it provides uh, or it stores the data directly in RAM. Okay, so this is in memory computing, which means storing the data directly in RAM rather than hard disk. And second is it stores the data in the column based form. Okay, and when it stores the data in the column based form, there can be any number of columns in the table and it will not affect the performance of that table when it comes to reporting. And on top of that, the another benefit of column-based data storage was compression. Okay, which means the data is not only stored in the column-based data, but the compressed data. Like for example, out of 10 GB of data, it compresses in a way and it only stores two or three GB of the data. So around 20 to 30 percent of the data. Okay, and so these are at the higher level benefits of HANA database, column based and in memory computing. Okay, so we will go through those same slides uh, which we started yesterday and we will see if whatever missing slides are there related to HANA, we will continue from that. Okay, so I'll just go a little bit quickly on uh, these things which we already discussed. So this one I don't need to explain again. You already know, we already know this. This is something which we just now discussed the problems uh, which are related to IT, like big data, Internet of Things, multiple server maintenance, and we had the ETL system, and obviously the huge hardware cost. Uh, from the business point of view, we had the complex user interface, the transaction processing was very slow, reportings were also slow, reports were outdated because uh, most of the reports were not available directly on the main system. Uh, we were moving the data from ECC to BW, and in BW, the reports were outdated, right? Because you are not moving the data from ECC to BW on a regular basis. In the real-time basis, it is only once in a week, once in a month. So whatever reports you are getting, the analytical reports, those are outdated. And obviously, there was a problem with the reconciliation. Okay, and then we discussed uh, SAP S4 HANA. So maybe yesterday, we have not discussed this slide in detail. I told you first, uh, we will talk about what is SAP HANA and then we will come back to the slides. Now let's try to understand this slide completely. So first of all, uh, we are, I think we are now clear on the difference between SAP HANA and SAP S4 HANA. SAP HANA is a database and SAP S4 HANA is an application which is built up on HANA database. Right, and that is the reason if you see this full form of SAP S4 HANA, it is SAP Business Suite for SAP HANA. This four is very important. Okay, so what four you are able to see, this four is nothing but four. Okay, and at the same time, sometimes even SAP call it as four for fourth generation, which means like the new generation requirements which are coming into the picture now. Okay, but just remember this for SAP HANA because I'll tell you, uh, again, there is a lot of confusion in the market when it comes to the full form of SAP S4 HANA and there is a confusion between different SAP products. Okay, so in the next slide, I'll explain you what exactly I mean. But just remember, SAP S4 HANA stands for SAP Business Suite for SAP HANA. 
okay and it is a new product i mean line number 2 it is a new product and a next generation of business applications okay so why we are calling it as a new product why we are not saying this is a new version so i think i gave you the uh, example yesterday it is not just ehp 5 to ehp 6 when it is ehp 5 to ehp 6 we can call it as a new version okay that is a version upgrade but this is a completely new product because if you look at the back end it has been replaced with traditional databases to sap hana database when you talk about the front end it has been replaced by the older screens with sap fiori screens so everything has been simplified everything has been changed and that is the reason sap is saying that this is not just a new version this is a completely new product okay and obviously it is a next generation of business application because the next generation is asking for this requirements next generation wants to do all their transactions on mobile devices they are not ready to wait for the reports to be executed in hours right so this is a new generation requirement based on which sap has developed this product it is third line fully built up on in memory platform sap hana okay so uh, i told you yesterday it is not possible that you are using sap s4 hana application on any third party database that is not possible at all right sap s4 hana will work only on sap hana database okay that is the whole idea of sap s4 hana the name itself is saying that it is developed for sap hana so it is built up on in memory platform which means uh, the data is directly stored in ram fourth point it provides an instant insight by using a single source of truth dynamic planning and analysis okay so what are these points now what is single source of truth what is dynamic planning and analysis and what is real time processes okay so let's let's talk about these three things one by one so provides an instant insight by using a single source of truth what do you mean by single source of truth so just now we discussed that in sap ecc there was a reconciliation issue okay now why there was a reconciliation issue because fi and co were two different components fi had different tables co had different tables so at the month end fi tables are showing some other results co tables are showing some different results now both cannot be true right either fi is showing you correct picture co is wrong or co is giving you correct picture fi is wrong so you need to find out what is truth because there were two so different sources of data but now when fi co are merged together there is only one table which is holding fi data as well as co data so that table is called a single source of truth because you don't need to find out what is truth and what is false everything whatever is available in that table is a truth so now there is no question of fi is truth or co is truth there is only one place where fi and co will be stored and that table is called a single source of truth so that is nothing but ac doc a table which is also called as universal journal data okay second one real time processes what do you mean by real time processes now so again just now i gave you the example earlier we were using outdated reports because in sap ecc we were not able to generate the graphical reports okay if you want pie charts if you want bar charts those kind of things were not available in ecc it was only possible you move the data from ecc to bw and in bw and bi you perform those reportings okay so again those were outdated reports so now how they become real time now in sap s4 hana there is something called as embedded bw embedded bw what do you mean by embedded bw embedded bw means there are some features of bw which are directly available in the core system so you don't need to move the data from ecc to bw in the same ecc or in the same core system of s4 hana you can see the graphical reports pie charts everything available at a single place okay so because of this embedded analytics it is also called as embedded analytics you are actually able to generate your bw reports directly in the main system which is real time because earlier bw was a separate system ecc was a separate system 
Now ECC and embedded VW both are available in one single box of S4 hub. So your transactions are also done in the same system and reporting is also carried out in the same system. So that is nothing but real time processes. Third one is dynamic planning and analysis. Now when see again when I'm explaining you SAP S4 HANA as a whole. So uh, today's session yesterday's session or maybe even another two sessions. I'm not thinking only about FI or CO. I'm thinking about entire S4 HANA product. OK, so when it comes to SAP ECC, can you just tell me what are the different kind of plannings that we do? Overall, I'm not asking about FI. OK, if you remember about FI, can you just tell me what are the different kind of plannings we do in SAP system? Cost center planning, profit center planning. OK. Uh, and uh, WBS elements uh, uh, planning. OK. Any any planning which we don't do directly in BPC, BPC, BPC planning. BPC, right? So BPC yes. is a separate component, right? Yes. So, yes. So why we need BPC separately? Again, the same thing. If we include that planning and consolidation module within the core system itself, the performance was already slower. It will again become slower. And that is the reason SAP came up with a BPC component. OK, so instead of uh, having the planning functionality directly in your core system, we were using BPC as a separate system. But now again, there is something called as embedded BPC. OK, so you must be aware of the terminology IBP, integrated business planning. So what is integrated business planning? It is subset of BPC. OK, so the planning functionalities which were available in BPC, now they are directly available in the core component as IBP. Which means even your planning and analysis will be happening on the single system. Earlier, your planning was happening in BPC system and your actuals were happening in ECC system. So you again need to move the data from ECC to BPC. Now even that is not required because everything will be available in one common system. So in short, with SAP S4 HANA, you have a single source of truth, which means one single table, which is giving you complete picture. You have embedded BW, which means you don't need to go out for graphical reports. You can generate the graphical reports within the core system itself. And even if you want to perform the advanced planning, which was earlier done outside the ECC box, now even that can be done within the same box. Okay, so that is the whole idea of why S4 HANA is better compared to traditional ECC system. On top of that, if you go to the next line, SAP S4 HANA provides modern and simplified user experience optimized for all devices. So this is nothing but SAP Fiori. So SAP Fiori is providing you better user experience. Okay, so you are able to uh, use simplified screens compared to that older screens that we were using in SAP ECC. And on top of that, these screens can be used on all devices. So you can use it on mobile, you can use it on tab, you can use it on laptop computer. So it is not necessary to sit in front of computer and laptop and do the transactions. Okay, now I'm not saying that all the transactions which you do on computers and laptops can be done on mobiles and tabs, but at least the basic transactions where you don't need much of data entry. For example, you want to approve something or you want to uh, reject something or there are something some uh, reports like dashboard you want to see. It's a CEO of a company. If he wants to know what is my sales for this month, you don't need to go into SAP system logging with his user ID and password and go to the re different reports and perform the analysis. What you can do is just open a a particular app in his mobile device and it will show him the complete picture. Okay, so that is something which you can expect using SAP FIOR. So the second last point, it reduces the data footprint of your company by removing the aggregates. I think this one you remember by this slide which we discussed yesterday. Let me take you to this slide. Yes, this one. So you can see the data footprint reduction out of 600 GB, you just came to around 42 GB in S4 HANA, right? So do you think there is any benefit of reducing the data? Definitely, right? Just try on your mobile device. Even if you have 6 GB of memory in your mobile, 
okay if you are using entire let's say 5.5 gb your mobile device will become slow and if you remove unwanted items you just make it maybe 2 gb or 3 gb automatically it will work fast right so with the reduction in the database size your speed will perform like your uh, transactions will perform faster at the same time it will also save the cost so out of 6 gb of memory if already you consume 5.5 gb so maybe in another one month you need to buy external memory if you want to store the same data but now if somebody provides you the solution that all your data which is around 5.5 gb will get reduced to 2 gb you don't need to purchase any additional memory right so that is again saving the cost of the hardware and finally the last point is choice of deployment so again if you remember i told you in sap ecc the major problem for the customers who are implementing sap for the first time the first thing that they need to do is they need to purchase the hardware okay and hardware was you, you all know hardware is very costly when it comes to sap so you need multiple servers you need multiple networking devices and on top of that you also need a team of consultant basis consultants network consultants who will be taking care of this hardware so it is a one time huge investment for the companies and that is the reason there were many medium size customers who were finding sap very costly so although software was not costing them much but if they consider hardware networking the people management all these things they were finding it that sap will be very costly that's the reason they were going for other cloud vendors like salesforce and maybe there are a lot of other companies who were providing uh, the cloud based service but now sap don't want it to lose those customers so with cloud option even small and medium customers can now think of going for sap as for hana so earlier it was only bigger customers who were implementing sap ecc system because it was too costly but now with no hardware cost or less hardware cost uh, the smaller customers or medium size customers can also think of going for sap as for hana okay so any question on this particular slide are you finding anything difficult to understand here i think this is very straight forward whatever we discussed yesterday those all things are put it in one slide <coughs> okay if not let's go to the next slide now this picture is showing you how sap as for hana has been evolved okay so you can see this picture is only between 2011 and 2015 okay so we need to talk about before 2011 and after 2015 also so let me tell you this story now see uh, we already understood sap ecc has lot of challenges the speed the user interface so all the customers who were using sap ecc system around 2005 6 they were already complaining to sap that these are the challenges which we are facing are you planning to upgrade your system to solve those challenges so sap realized that yes we need to work on the speed we need to work also on the user interface so they took this one by one so the first thing they have done is they tried to found find out how can we improve the speed so as i told you if you just go before 2011 sap was totally dependent on third party databases now when it comes to the speed the speed will be only dependent on the database that we are using so what sap has done is sap said okay let's discuss with our third party vendors and try to understand how we can improve the speed so they discussed with oracle they discussed with sql they discussed with sybase okay but whatever answers they got like how they are planning to improvise on the speed they were not sap was not happy with those answers and that was the time sap decided that okay let's do one thing let's try to build up on our own product which will be using latest of technologies okay and that is where the sap hana idea came into the mind and then in 2006 7 they started to develop this product from scratch that is sap hana okay and finally in 
the first official version of sap hana was launched okay so sap hana only came into picture in 2011 so customers who were already using sap ecc system on oracle sybase sql they were provided the choice that if they want to improve the speed just replace your database with sap hana so those are the customers i gave you example yesterday who are using ecc system on hana database okay even the customers in 2012 2013 there were a lot of customers who were implementing sap so during that time sap was providing them the option that if you are implementing sap you have a choice whether you want to go for hana or you want to continue using the traditional databases okay but you can see in 2012 sap came up with first product on sap hana database that is sap bw then in 2013 sap came up with sap business suite powered by sap hana this is nothing but sap ecc system on hana database okay that's the reason i told you just remember this different terminologies sap business suite powered by sap hana it doesn't means as for hana that for what is important powered by sap hana and for sap hana are two different things powered by sap hana means sap ecc system on hana database so in 2013 sap came up with sap hana as a database and it was only available on sap ecc applications then again they sap had a plan to uh, come up with the newer product and that is exactly if you see in 2014 sap came up with sap simple finance powered by sap hana now is sap simple finance as for hana or not what do you think is simple finance and as for hana the same thing no no any other answer no no what is the difference then it is uh, ecc6 only but hana database not it is powered by sap hana only not as for hana then then what is the difference between uh, sap business suite powered by sap hana and sap simple finance powered by sap hana so if it is ecc then this is also ecc on hana database so what is the difference in simple finance and ecc on hana single source okay single source okay yes single source correct but what do you mean by single source okay let me let me summarize this see if you see 2013 in 2013 sap came up with the same sap ecc system on hana database okay so only database is new application is completely same so whatever tables whatever transactions you were using same transactions will be used only the difference would be in the background you will be using sap hana database right but what was the future like they they wanted to simplify the processes also so here in 2013 they only simplified the speed but what about the simplified processes what about the user interface they also wanted to simplify that and that is exactly what they have done in 2014 so in now if they want to simplify the processes there are a lot of modules in sap if they want to simplify finance controlling mm sd pp apo ewm there are a lot of different modules in sap so they cannot simplify everything at one go so they need to prioritize they need to think which module will be simplified first what would be the second module what will be the third module so what they have done is they identified that finance is a first module that we want to simplify okay and they simplified the finance module and they named it as sap simple finance so if you are going for sap simple finance powered by sap hana it is an add on i'll talk about what is add on your base system will still remain same ecc ehp 7 or ehp 8 but your financial processes will be simplified it will not make any change to mm sd pp and all they will remain as it is but financial processes even ac doc a table will also come into the picture if you go for simple finance so simple finance means sap ecc system okay which consists of 
the separate add on it will simplify only finance processes finance and controlling okay so because fi and ci are merged together so we don't need to talk about two components separately so in short sap simple finance is a product which will only simplify fi and ci it will not touch anything in mm sd pp and all okay and then in 2015 finally they simplified mm sd pp all other modules and instead of calling it as a simple logistics there are a lot of guys who say there is something called a simple logistics but there is nothing called a simple logistics okay this is just like we say simple finance so people are thinking simple logistics also exists there is nothing called a simple logistics sap s for hana is the official name of the product which includes simplified financial processes as well as simplified logistics processes okay but it is not simple logistics it is the complete product is called as sap s for hana which has simplified finance as well as simplified logistics processes finance processes can be implemented separately so simple finance even customer today in 2019 also if there is a customer who says i don't care about mm sd pp i am okay to work on them as it is but i want to simplify my financial processes so he can even today go for sap simple finance he don't need to go for sap s for hana because if he goes for sap s for hana all the processes mm sd pp everything will get changed will get simplified okay so it is up to the customer whether they want to simplify only financial processes or all the processes so for only finance processes he will go for sap simple finance and for all the processes they will go for sap s for r okay so these are just the pointers what is new in simple finance so you can see instant financial insight which means uh, you will be getting the reports in real time no aggregates we discussed yesterday the repetition of data will not be there single source of truth just now we understood that ac docket table is available even in simple finance also if you go for sap s for hana you have simplified data model which means the tables which were available in sd mm pp everywhere those are many tables are deleted you are getting a new user experience in the form of sap fiori and also if you go for sap s for hana you are getting the choice of deployment whether you want to go for uh cloud or you going to go for on premise system <clears throat> okay what about after 2015 so in 2015 the first version of sap s for hana came into the market and that version was called as s for hana what which version the first version on s for hana 1511 so 1511 yes 1511 was the first version on s for hana and what do you mean by 1511 what is the meaning of 1511 uh 15 year 11 is month 15 is a year and 11 is a month correct yeah. so 15 is 2015 it came in 2015 in the month of 11 11 month that is november 1511 so after 1511 again next year 1610 16 again 2016 month october again 1709 2017 ninth month and the latest one which is available today is 1809 which is 2018 9 Now, if you ask me, what is the difference between 1511, 1610, 1709, 1809? 1809, 1809? So, if you just understand this from 2014 to 2015, in 2014, SAP has already simply only simplified finance. In 2015, MM as the PP was also simplified. In 2016, WM was also simplified. In 2017, BPC was also simplified. In 2018. Maybe APO and all are simplified. So what is happening? More and more modules are getting simplified with each version. If I talk from the financials and controlling point of view, you will not find much of changes. I'm not saying no changes. There are some changes, but zero to two percent. Okay, so you will not find much of changes between sixteen ten and eighteen zero nine. Okay, almost everything is same. If you compare sixteen ten and eighteen zero nine. almost all the things are exactly same okay so that is where we are today we are in 
sorry uh, the version we are in 1809 which we are using currently which is latest in the market and most of the projects which are already being executed in the market are 1709 okay because 1809 was just launched 3 months back 3 to 4 months back okay so there are only the new customers who will go for sap s for hana they will go for 1809 but whatever projects are already there from 6 to 8 months they are already into 1709 okay any question here on this slide no questions okay let's go to the next slide now so now that you understood what is sap s for hana the official product name is s for hana enterprise management so like our initial product the last product was called as sap ecc okay but it was also called as sap erp right so similarly this sap s for hana is called as sap s for hana enterprise management why it is enterprise management because it consists of all the modules that you have in sap ecc plus advanced features okay so yes yes if you see the example now see earlier if you compare this picture with this ecc picture on the center we have sap erp and it is surrounded by crm srm scm plm so crm srm scm and plm were considered advanced models in sap ecc but now the crm srm scm plm these these are no, no more considered as advanced models they are actually became obsolete okay nowadays nobody wants to go for crm srm actually they want to go for hybrids they want to go for ariba they want to go for success factors okay so these are the things which are required by the customers now which are being implemented by the customers now okay and that is the reason if you see this sap s for hana instead of crm srm apo ewm whatever functionalities we were using as as a separate box those functionalities are not being used as a separate box instead the functionalities like ariba success factor field glass hybris conquer these are the new generation technologies and all of them are available on cloud only cloud okay now if you ask me then does it mean that crm srm this is completely gone and nobody is using it so although if it is available okay in sap s for hana you don't like sap is trying to bring most of the features which are available in crm srm and all those separate boxes into the main component itself the central component that is s for hana enterprise management okay so normally crm srm apo and all these are not required to be activated as a separate box they can be included in the same box if they are required okay so the scope of s4 hana enterprise management is much bigger compared to the scope of sap ecc because crm srm apo ewm bpc uh, bw i told you everything is embedded now within the central component okay so we don't need them surrounded by the central component instead we need the new dimensional modules like conquer field glass success factor which are surrounded by your digital core this is called as a digital core so ecc core is replaced with the digital core or s4 hana core okay any question okay let's go to the next one again this is something which you must be already knowing but just a slide which will help you out so sap s4 hana makes the use of these technologies you can see there are three key enablers one is sap hana as a database so what is provided by sap hana if you see on the left hand side olap and oltp merge i'll talk about what is olap and what is oltp shortly in memory computing which we already discussed compression and increase in the speed so this is something which is provided by sap hana database what is provided by sap fiori if you see the bottom screen it provides a better user experience which is 
you have cross application user experienced web based which can be used from all devices role based and decisive we will be talking about these things when we will be discussing about sap fiori then you have third one is real time and simplified processes okay so which means how fico has been simplified how uh, the other modules in sap s4 hana are simplified so in short there are no aggregates and no index tables yesterday we discussed like bsis bsas fagal flex team all those tables are removed why because they were actually creating the reputation right they were unnecessarily increasing the data in the memory okay so those things are not required and that is the reason you can see the last point data footprint reduction so overall memory size from maybe 600 gb we have seen the example it is coming only to 42 gb okay so and on the right hand side these are some of the figures which sap has provided when they worked on initial projects so 10 times smaller data footprint okay which means if you are using 1 tb of data it will come to let's say 100 gb of data seven times higher throughput what is throughput throughput means output minus input now what is output and what is input so can you just tell me simple why we need sap or why we need any software for any particular process we want to generate more and more reports yes right what the whole purpose of using this software is to get the transparency what is happening in our organization how will you get the transparency in the form of reports and how will you get the reports only when you input the data so outputs is nothing but your reports but in order to get those output you need to enter some input and normally what happens is you are getting few outputs and whole day you are just inputting the data so you are wasting more time on inputting the data and less time on getting the reports but now because of sap fiori the amount of time required to input the data will go down and amount of time you will be accessing the reports will go up why because the reports are available on mobile that is also real time so instead of looking at the reports only monthly or weekly you can see the reports multiple times in a day right so that is the reason seven per seven times higher throughput 1800 times faster analytics and reporting we already discussed this yesterday and four times less process steps so whenever you do any transaction let's say whenever you are trying to create a vendor invoice let's say you need to enter the information in the header then you need to enter the information in the lines okay so let's say there are four sections that you need to maintain now with sap fiori this simplified the screen so instead of entering four different sections in one section itself you enter the data so the four steps that you were performing to execute the data enter the data now it will come to one step okay this is again just a example so in short less time to execute the process okay so these are key enablers of sap s4 hana coming to sap hana this slides we already discussed yesterday okay so why traditional databases were slow and we discussed what is row based versus column based we discussed this slide again and again complex data model so there were a lot of tables index tables aggregate tables which are no more required and you you can see uh, this is example which i took from the logistics but simple same example i can give you for also maybe when we will go through the processes okay so in short lot of tables which were unnecessarily storing the same data repetition those are removed and only main tables are kept so let's go to the next one sap hana we understood is in memory computing it stores the data in the ram simplified data model remove redundancy less data footprint it stores the data in row as well as column and finally 1800 times faster processing so let's go to the next one now again in this slide there are one or two things which you already know but there are two new things which will be also very important so how or why sap hana is faster so we already know it because it is in memory it stores the data in ram 
and if you are storing the data in the ram automatically the time required to process the data will come down second is row versus column database we discussed that column based database uh, allows you to reduce the number of tables and also it reduces the data footprint because the data is stored in the compressed form the next two points we are not discussed massively parallel processing what do you mean by massively parallel processing so if you just take an example what i told you why sap has decided to come up with a completely new database on their own because they realized that the traditional database vendors like oracle sql they are still using the architecture which was there around 30 years old so around 30 years old they never think of storing the data in ram why because ram was very costly and there was a huge difference between ram price and rom price okay but nowadays even a small mobile device is having a good amount of ram okay so what is happening the new technologies are there and sap wanted to make the use of this latest technological uh, advantages which are available so massively parallel processing this means if you take a simple example if you just go 10 years back which processor we were using in our laptop pentium 1 pentium 2 something right p1 p2 p3 something then came intel then came intel duo then i3 i4 i5 i6 i7 i8 i, I think i8 is the latest one right so what is happening what do you mean by what is the difference between i6 and i8 multiple processors right so definitely if you buy a laptop with i5 and compare it with i8 it will definitely be faster why because multiple processes can be performed in parallel it is just like if i give you the example if you wanted to paint the building of six floors okay and you are giving this task to a single person and he is taking one day to paint one floor he will take six days to complete that task so this is kind of one processor one person is doing that task but if i deploy six different persons the task can be completed in one day so this is like i'm deploying six different processors so sap is using the hardware which is very advanced multiple processors which are working simultaneously to complete the task okay so that is something called as massively parallel processing parallel processing means multiple processes are happening at the same time it is not sequential it is parallel okay so you can see uh, linear performance scaling making sophisticated calculus no sorry that is not the case just give me a minute yeah next one is a calculation engine now what is a calculation engine for this one i have to show you something in excel just to explain you what is calculation engine let me just open the excel file okay so can you tell me table fagel flex t you all know what is table fagel flex t what is the purpose of fagel flex t why do we need this table anyone it's a aggregate table okay it's the aggregate table what is the purpose of aggregate table in sap why do we need aggregate tables these are also called as total table aggregate or total table what is the purpose of aggregate tables and total tables in sap why do we need them so many times you don't need the line item details to be provided at that time you need only the total value so system doesn't don't need to go into the details and sum the line items to provide a total that's why we have a total and the line items table separately to just to you know faster performance exactly perfect answer so let's say we have this fagel flexa table what is the difference between fagel flexa and fagel flex t fagel flexa table is line item table so all the lines let's say there is account number 1001 this is my account and this is my transaction 
amount. So let's say I made some, this is let's say my bank account, 1001. And if I make some payments, let's say this will be minus 1000. If I receive some payments, it will be plus 2000. If I make another payment, let's say for 3000, it will be minus 3000. So let's say I keep on doing these transactions. Okay, so on day to day basis, we are doing a lot of transactions, lot of payments, lot of invoices, lot of receipts, right? So let's say like this, there are thousands of transactions for this single GL, which is bank account. Now, if I want to know what is the total amount, what is the total balance in this GL account, I can simply go here and perform the calculation and it shows me the total balance is 6000. Okay, but how many lines are there? These are only seven lines. In real time scenario, in any one GL account, if you go and see in FidoFlexa table, you will find millions and billions of records. Right? If you just go to FidoFlexa for a particular company code, and if you try to see for this GL account how many lines are there, there will be millions and billions of records. So, if you want to know what is the total amount available, if you don't have this Fagal Flex T table, what it has to do, it has to go for Fagal Flexa. It has to find out all those million billions of records and then it has to perform the calculation to tell you how much is the total balance. Right? And in order to perform that calculation for million billions of records, system will take a lot of time. And that is the reason SAP said, okay, instead of that, let's create a table where it will always store whatever is the total balance. So this is 6,000. So next time when you go for again this GL account and let's say you will do minus 1,000, it will automatically come here and it will make it as 5,000. So which means whenever you want to generate a report, it will not go here and perform the calculation. It will directly go here and it will tell you the balance is 5,000. So this was the main purpose of aggregate and total split to to avoid making these calculations because if, if it performs this calculation, the system will be too slow. Now, why it was a problem? Why even if I have billions, millions of records, can't I perform the calculation? Because my databases were Oracle, SQL, and they were taking a lot of time to perform this calculation, SAP has decided to come up with these aggregate tables. But now SAP is saying that if you are using SAP HANA database, any number of records, we have a very powerful calculation in there, which will automatically perform all these calculations in real time. So no need of aggregates. In SAP, there are a lot of aggregate tables which were used earlier. Those are all removed now. Why? Because SAP HANA has a very powerful calculation engine and we don't need to store this data separately. It will be calculated whenever you perform the report. So again, what you are achieving out of it, you are achieving the data footprint. Unnecessary data was getting stored. There were unnecessary n number of tables which were just holding the data which is already there in some other form. Right? So that is the reason Fagal Flexi and other many different tables which are aggregate and total tables are no more available in SAP as for HANA. Okay, so this is only possible because of the very powerful calculation engine of SAP HANA. Clear on this? Any question? No questions, let's go further. So this is again just to explain what we already discussed regarding embedded BW. So in SAP ECC, you can see we had a separate transactional system. So this is your ECC system. We were doing the transactions here and every maybe day, weekly or monthly through this ETL, we discussed what is ETL listed, extraction, transform and load. So through this ETL tool, we were moving the data from ECC to the BW system, right? So what are the problem here? The problem was we had three different copies of data. We need three different servers, okay? Unnecessarily data latency, same data again and again, you are moving from here and there, right? 
so poor innovation leading to waste of time but now when we are talking about sap hana database we are saying that even this bw is part of your main component okay so you can eliminate the unnecessary complexity and latency less hardware to manage okay and accelerate through innovation simplification and eliminate so what exactly this means this is in in other terms we can call it as earlier what was happening is you were doing the transactions here and you were doing the reporting here so this was called as your oltp system and this was called as your olap system what do you mean by oltp and olap i think if you uh, gone through the uh, in in your college time when you were understanding the database concepts this terms were very common oltp and olap oltp means online transaction processing which means the system which allows you to perform the transactions and olap means the system which allows you to do the reporting so in traditional ecc system you have two different systems one for reporting second for transactions but now with s4 hana or sap hana database your oltp has merged with olap so you have one common system where you are doing the transactions and also performing your reports okay so that is something you can see this line the common database approach for online transaction processing and online analytical processing using an in memory column based database okay so let's take a break for 5 minutes uh, i i realized yesterday there were a lot of guys who were getting bored just give me 5 minutes we will start in exactly 5 minutes so around 1832 we will come back
Hello, are you all back? Yes, say yes, or just write on the chat screen. Yeah, I'm back. Sandeep, Varun, Purva, Mahesh, are you there? Yes, yes, Varun. OK, perfect. OK, so let's go to the next slide now. Any questions till now before I go to the next one? Uh, could you just uh, explain the OLAP and OLTP once again, please? Yes. See, OLTP is online transaction processing, which means, see, what was happening in SAP ECC, your SAP ECC box, it was mainly for performing the transactions. All your reportings, like I'm not saying the normal regular reportings, I'm talking about the reportings that senior management wants to see. Okay, so in SAP ECC, it was not possible to generate the graphical reports like pie chart and bar charts. So either the customer was using BW2, okay, where they were uh, able to display those reports in those graphical formats, or maybe the customers who were not using BW, uh, the accountants, they were facing the data from ECC and in Excel, they were creating those reports, right? It's so a time consuming. It's a, yes, it's a time consuming and outdated. Okay, second thing is outdated reports. And that too, you have two different systems, one for transaction processing, second for reporting. So now with this concept of SAP HANA, what they are saying is they have embedded BW, which means your graphical reports, which can be shown to your management, top management, you don't need to do any additional activity. It will be automatically available in real time and that too in the same system. So you are OLTP, is transaction processing and your reporting is available in one single platform rather than two different components. Is it okay, Amit, you understood? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay then let's go to the next one. Uh, SAP Fiori, I don't need, we need to talk about now. Let me, uh, we have a separate session for this. So let me just ignore these topics. We will talk about this in detail. Yes, we can talk about deployment options now. So again and again, we discussed that in SAP ECC, uh, the hardware was a huge problem. So customer, whoever wants to go for SAP ECC system, they have to purchase the hardware first. And for smaller customers, it was always a challenge because hardware costs were huge and it was one time investment. Okay, so the customers, medium or small customers, they were not able to implement SAP because uh, they were finding this hardware to be very expensive and they were going for some other vendors in terms of their ERP. So SAP was losing the business because uh, SAP was not providing the cloud solution at that time. But now with SAP S4 HANA, SAP came up with the deployment options in terms of on-premise and on-cloud. What do you mean by on-premise? On-premise means exactly what we are doing today. On-premise means customer is buying the hardware, he's buying the software, and he is the owner of hardware and software. Okay, so he don't need to uh, be dependent on anybody else. He can decide what he wants to do with the system, okay? There was no dependency. But when it comes to cloud, cloud is something where the hardware is not yours. Okay, you are getting the hardware from some third party. And even when we are talking about SAP, as far on a cloud, even the software that you are using, that is also available only for a particular time frame. So let's take a simple example. Let's, let's take a practical example. There is a customer who is interested in implementing SAP, okay, and he decided to go with SAP S4 HANA. But the thing is, he wants to compare the two options, whether he should go for on-premise or he should go for on-cloud. So in this, in this case, if he is looking for the help from us, the consultants, whether I should go for cloud or I should go for on-premise, the first thing that we will ask him is, does it has that much budget 
to go for on premise okay if he has that much budget if he has the capability to purchase the hardware then definitely there is nothing like the on premise okay on the other hand if there is no budget then there is no question of thinking it is only cloud option which is available right so in this case if if i whatever example i gave it looks like on premise is a boss right on premise is something which is good but there is one drawback of on premise compared to cloud when you are going for cloud since sap is providing you software and it is also providing you hardware the software that you will be using will be always the latest one so just to give an example let's say you are implementing sap today so the latest version is available is 1809 now after 3 months or 6 months if sap comes up with another latest version if you are using on premise it is up to you whether you implement whether you want to upgrade to the latest version or not but if it is cloud by default you will be using the latest version okay so you will be always updated if you are using the cloud version without any additional cost so if you are going for 1809 today and tomorrow sap comes up with 1902 you again need to invest time effort uh, amount in upgrading your system but if you are going for cloud it is sap's responsibility to upgrade the system to the latest one you will not be charged anything separately for that okay so that is one of the benefit of cloud so on premise allows you to have a complete control or what you want you what do you don't want whatever z codes custom codes you want to create that you can create on premise on cloud is something which is available for cheaper compared to on premise at least initially see over the period of time if you compare for 10 years it may happen that cloud is more costly okay again if you just take a example this on premise is like owning your own apartment you can decide what things you want to change from here to there you can change even the uh, entire uh, civil work within your home but cloud is like a rented apartment okay so you are just paying the rent and you are residing you don't have any control okay it depends upon if if you want to let's say uh, just example uh, if you want to paint a house every year okay if it is on premise it will be on your cost but if you want to paint a house where you are renting in that case it will be up to the owner because he is responsible for providing you the clean house every year okay so this is just an example so you can definitely save cost if you go for cloud but you will lose the control you cannot create any z objects there are a lot of restrictions so in short the first question that i told you is whether there is a budget or not if there is a budget definitely most of the customers will go for on premise because we all understand we are all coming from sap background there are no customers in sap who are not using z codes okay so if there is lot of z required if there are lot of customizations required you cannot do you cannot be able to do that in the cloud solution in that case you need on premise okay so that is the basic difference between on premise on cloud so let's go through this wordings now if you see this sap s4 hana on premise this is kind of traditional one as i told you it is same as what we are using today so traditional licensing with customer control of deployment and maintenance customer can decide what i want what i don't want so sap s4 hana already offers a business scope that is similar in terms of coverage functionality industries languages to current sap business suite, which means sap s4 hana on premise edition already provides all those functions which were available in sap ecc plus advanced switches so all those functionalities industry specific solutions languages everything is available similar to sap ecc system but when it comes to sap s4 hana cloud edition it is subscription licensing with deployment in the private cloud maintained by sap so hardware software everything is maintained by sap and this cloud version again comes in three different editions the first edition is sap s4 hana cloud project services 
second is marketing edition and third is cloud enterprise edition so what are these three name itself says project services edition so if you go for this version or this edition of sap s4 on a cloud you will be only getting the modules related to project related project based organizations if you go for marketing edition you will be only getting the modules which are relevant for marketing related organizations but if you want to go for all modules then you have to go for cloud enterprise edition okay now why these options are provided because obviously cloud enterprise edition will be costly compared to this two okay so yeah this is project edition mean to this is specific for projects project related organizations like my project is 3 to 5 years for no 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 project services edition means okay the question is what exactly is project services edition so there are lot of project based organizations for example construction companies okay they are, they are not manufacturing they are not uh, maybe selling that much like creating the sales orders and all they will be doing most of their activities in project system module of sap so only those modules which are related to project services will be provided in this edition if you go to marketing edition it will be more of sd crm uh, hybris those modules will be provided in cloud marketing edition but if you go for cloud enterprise edition it will, it will include all the modules so definitely the cost of this cloud enterprise edition will be much more compared to project service and marketing editions and that is the reason sap is selling this because customers who don't want a complete package at least they can go with this and sap can actually convert them as a clients rather than just giving one option and if it is too costly for others they will not be able to enjoy sap s4 hana right so sap s4 hana cloud edition comes in cloud yeah cloud edition comes into three editions one for project service second for marketing and third one for enterprise edition now maybe going forward or maybe even today also they might have come with even different editions because this were the initial two project service and marketing they may come with manufacturing also they come with some other editions also but the full functionality is only available in cloud enterprise edition. okay now we will see the differences between the two in more detail so on premise versus on cloud if you see the licensing model i'm going point by point licensing model in case of sap s4 hana on premise it is traditional licensing what do you mean by traditional licensing same as sap ecc so whatever licensing was followed earlier same licensing if you go for sap s4 hana cloud edition it is subscription licensing so like rented every quarterly every yearly you need to pay the subscription amount coming to the second point infrastructure and maintenance the customer is in control of deployment and maintenance with dedicated own it staff so customers own it staff can decide what they want to maintain how they want to deploy everything is in control of a customer but in case of cloud sap provides the system and is responsible for system maintenance so one thing is good here that you don't need your dedicated it staff where you can save a lot of money but at the same time you don't have any control because sap will decide whether it should be upgraded or not the maintenance should be carried out or not coming to the third point speed of innovation as i told you what is innovation every time sap is coming up with new versions so in case of on premise again customer will decide whether the innovation is required or not customer will decide whether they want to go for the new version or not if they go for new version again they have to have some down times they have to dedicate a team the effort the amount okay which is cost for the customers but if it is on cloud you can see cloud customer participate automatically on quarterly innovation updates every quarterly sap cloud customers will be getting the latest software without paying any additional cost implementation approach fourth point 
highly individual requirement regarding business processes and customizations which means customer can decide whether they want to implement the standard business processes or customizations so how much z they want to incorporate that is up to the customer but if you go for cloud you have to use predefined base practices configuration with limited specialization so whatever is available for all is available for you okay you cannot make your own customizing changes now why why do you think these are the uh, restrictions in cloud because this cloud server is normally shared by multiple clients okay and if sap allows you to create z codes if sap allows you to play with the standard processes that will impact other customers also okay and that is the reason in cloud edition you don't get much control because if you make some changes and it impacts other customers then definitely it is a big loss to sap nobody will go for cloud then. coming to the functional scope we just now discussed that the functional scope of sap on premise is similar to the erp scope with advanced features like success factors field glass hybris ariva okay all these are the functional scope of sap s4 hana on premise similarly in sap s4 hana cloud you will not find all the functions which are available on premise because cloud edition is a subset of on premise okay so whatever functions are available in on premise it is not necessary that those functions are available on cloud okay so it is subset coming to the last one custom code so whether custom codes are allowed or not so in case of on premise full traditional abap extensibility to core modification which means full abap is available to you you decide whatever reports you want to create you change forms you create bodies bodies copies whatever you want but in case of cloud in app extensibility with limited abap okay so little bit of abap is provided now earlier even that was not provided okay and that was only possible with this additional component called as hana cloud platform which is little bit technical but just understand this concept that in cloud there are not much of customizations allowed one more thing the difference between on premise and cloud in case of on premise what are the different versions and at what intervals the versions are coming in case of sap s4 hana we just now discussed what are the different versions available 15 11 16 yes 15 16 10 so what is happening every year one new version right but in case of cloud new version is available every quarter three. every 3 months every 3 months there is a new version on cloud okay so you can see in between two versions of on premise then can be multiple cloud versions normally it is 3 so between 15 11 and 16 10 you will find four versions of cloud okay so every quarterly in case of cloud you will find a new version okay let me show you this particular thing uh, maybe i'll complete this and then i'll show you so you can see this is on premise this one and this is on cloud so this is yearly innovation cycle and this is quarterly innovation cycle okay these are sap portals okay so maybe if i try to open this these are sap help portals which will give you the basic information of which on premise uh, versions are available and which uh, on cloud versions are available okay so you can see this is for on premise in case of on premise we have 1511 we have 1610 we have 1709 and we have 1809 now the question is what are this then 1511 at ps01 at ps02 so in between two yearly versions if there are any corrections service pack right so why there is a service pack if there are any corrections 
so for example when sap came out with 1511 when customers started implementing they found out some issues and sap has made those corrections and they said okay now go with this version so these are just the simplifications and corrections these are not the different versions altogether versions are this one 1511 1610 1709 and 1809 okay but same thing if you try for cloud if you go to this site which is for cloud it's taking some time maybe otherwise sap s for hana cloud help Mm, yes, let's go through this. Okay, so here you can see it is only showing you last three versions every three months: eighteen zero five, eighteen zero eight, eighteen eleven. Now, why it is not showing previous versions? Because in case of on-premise, it is possible that the customer is using fifteen eleven till now. but in case of on cloud all the customers are already upgraded to the latest one so why you need the documentation of older ones right because there is no option here right so every quarterly new versions are coming in case of s for hana cloud but in case of s for hana on premise the versions are available every year okay so i tell you which of the information here in this section in this help document which are the important a uh, documents that you should refer but not now we will come back to this topic later on so i will share this slides also with you today so that you can also go through slides and ask questions if you have gorav okay, sir I, i have one question like you mentioned that these uh, you know, versions are available for cloud whether these versions are also available for on premise customers i mean do they, if they want can they go for this uh, such upgrades mm -hmm. no 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 on premise is completely independent of on cloud so the versions which are available for on premise are only available for on premise and the versions which are available for cloud are only available for cloud okay okay so maybe the last topic for today is adoption options okay we discussed about deployment options what are deployment options cloud or on premise now adoption option means let's say now till now whatever we have discussed you explained all these things to the customer and customer said yes perfect i i like the product i want to go ahead with s for hana now in which like how exactly he will go ahead with s for hana so there are different scenarios one scenario is customer is not using sap at all okay maybe he is using some third party erp or maybe tally or something and he want to go for s4 hana so he will be definitely going for new implementation okay that is called as new implementation other customer maybe he is already using sap from last 10 years he is using sap ecc today and now he wants to go for s4 hana so for him it will not be the new implementation it will be actually upgradation or conversion it is called a system conversion and there is third kind of project which is called as landscape transformation what do you mean by landscape transformation landscape transformation means if you have multiple sap systems have you seen this kind of situation where one customer is using different sap systems okay normally in india it's very rare scenario but if you uh, go outside there are lot of companies who are using that so they have a different system let's say a global company they have thousands of company codes okay so they are not able to manage everything in one system so they have divided their us system separately germany system separately so now if they want to go for s4 hana it will take years to upgrade all the systems independently to s4 hana so what they are doing is they are saying okay we will continue using our old systems but in real time 
whatever data we enter in our current system that should go to s4 hana system so that the consolidated report is available in s4 hana system so that is called as landscape transformation and a very important topic related to landscape transformation is central finance central finance is just an example of landscape transformation okay so we will talk about central finance also in one of the session but just now let's talk about this three scenarios in detail so you can see these are the three adoption options first see the last one last one is new implementation okay so where customer is not using sap system at all and they want to go for sap s4 hana so they have the option whether they want to go for on premise or they want to go for cloud okay now let's see at the first scenario system conversion in this case customer is already using sap system and now he wants to go for s4 hana so he will go for system conversion you can see the example complete conversion of existing sap business suite system to sap s4 hana system okay so this is called as system conversion where you are moving from erp to s4 hana and the third project you can see in between in the middle is landscape transformation where you can see customer is already using multiple sap or non sap systems and now they want to consolidate see the example consolidation of current regional sap business suite landscapes into one global sap s4 hana system okay so in case of new implementation customer will discard the current system and they will start using the new system in case of system conversion the current system will be upgraded okay so there is no question of discarding it will be upgraded to the latest version but in case of landscape transformation both the source system as well as target system will be used in parallel so you will be doing your transactions here in your old sap ecc systems and in real time the data through idocs or through slt replication data will move to another system so your transactions are done here but your reporting will be done here and this is just a this is not something which will go for years this is just a temporary solution till the time all the systems are upgraded to s4 hana okay so central finance exactly does that central finance means this system is central finance system which is picking the data from different systems in real time and showing the reports here okay so one slide on each what is system conversion system conversion means you are already using sap ecc system which is sap business suite which is running on old sap gui okay so normal sap gui the core system is sap erp core and you might be already using sap hana database or you are using any other database and you now want to migrate to sap s4 hana which uses only sap hana database it uses sap s4 hana core and from gui perspective it uses sap fiori but still old gui is also available okay so either old gui or sap fiori you want to move from here to here sap has provided the tools called as sum with dmo we we'll talk about this in detail so this tool will be uh, required to convert your existing system to s4 hana system okay so this is the technical tool which basis will use to convert this system to s4 hana system coming to the second one which is called as landscape transformation what is happening in the landscape transformation you have two different sap systems let's say one for us second for europe okay and whatever transactions you do in europe as well as us in real time those will come into this central system for reporting okay so you are doing the transactions here and you are getting the reports here and on addition to this you can also have third party system not necessarily sap so from let's say you are using sap in us sap in europe and let's say in asia you are using oracle oracle apps so not only you are moving the data in real time from sap systems but you can also move the data from 
third party system using this landscape transformation option okay so you this is your central finance system which is picking the data from multiple different sources in real time and the last one is new implementation which is like you currently have the legacy system legacy system can be any system sap non sap uh, why i am saying sap so there are a lot of customers who are reimplementing so they already are using sap but they don't want to upgrade they want to start from scratch so for them sap is also the legacy system right so new customers or maybe already old customers they want to perform everything from scratch so they will treat this project as a new implementation project okay so you are moving your legacy system to sap s4 hana system okay so i think we should stop here there is too much of theory we already discussed any questions till now please ask questions if you have any questions if you don't clarify now going forward it will be difficult i think nowadays lots of companies are moving to the central finance because they are use uh, currently they are using sap as an old uh, system as a legacy system and they also want to utilize the hana services so what do you think that uh, what is the trend currently in the market no definitely see i mean uh, this central finance system is only uh, recommended for the customers who already have multiple systems in place so if you just take a example a company where there is only one sap system is used then there is no question of central finance so only very big companies where they have different sap systems in place and in order to consolidate it will take them years so they are going for central finance so again if you ask me the percentage percentage of central finance projects would be around 2 to 5% and mostly this uh, central finance projects are happening for uh, us and uh, yeah i think even europe is not that much projects us there are a lot of central finance projects the reason is most of the companies they have the headquarters in us okay so only those big companies where there are multiple sap systems which are being used currently they are going for central finance so in india even in asia or maybe even if you ask me in europe i have not seen much of projects just one or two projects which are which i heard are working on central finance but in us yes definitely there are a lot of projects on central finance Yeah, got it. But again, there is a big challenge for any company who are using SAP for last say twenty years, using different uh, generations of SAP, and now Hana is there. So it's uh, where now the system, uh, the current system is so customized. It is very difficult for them to close all the customizations and move directly to Hana. You know, their their end users are so customized, and they may not be so open to accept the new challenges, new and the learning sort of of another i think that may be a bottleneck in in the acceptance from the customer perspective yes definitely so i'll i'll share one example on this also but before i share that example let me tell you one more thing that is a reason where you need to decide between new implementation or system conversion if a customer is already using sap and they now want to upgrade to s4 hana there are two options they can go for new implementation from scratch or they can go for system conversion in case of new implementation yes all their custom codes have to be rewritten okay so whatever they have done till now they have to again start from scratch but if they are going for system conversion even most of their custom codes will work as it is if they are performing the upgradeation most of the custom codes most of the processes they were using only around 20 30% change but otherwise everything will work as it is okay maybe in the simplified in the faster way okay so just to answer your question that challenge is definitely there to convince to the customers and their users that we are going for better but in in terms of the reportings and all customizations whatever you have done in your ecc system if you go for system conversion those customizations those z codes those forms Will definitely work. Most of them. I'm not saying all, 
i'll also tell you how to check how many work how many will not work but most of them let's say around 60% of them will definitely work in the new system also okay so the thing conversion is for those customers who don't want to lose their z codes and new implementation is for those customers who are not happy with their current system they anyways want to start from scratch okay amit yes you are right so this this transformation would be temporary or they can continue this for long uh, which one uh, landscape transformation so where you are they are using the existing custom codes as well as they are using the hana uh, hana uh, features so they can continue for long like this uh, you you are talking about this scenario right exactly yeah, yeah. yeah in this scenario this is temporary because till the time you upgrade your all the systems to s4 hana you will be using this option but once all the systems are connected to s4 hana or maybe a single system is taking care of all the systems then you don't need any real time replication here so this will be discarded later on i think it's used both ways right got this was here um one of the things that i'm seeing a lot in us is that they're using uh, you know slt uh, system landscape transformation with s4 hana finance uh, as a strategy to move everything to or s4 hana but i think as a first step right what they want to do is just have one of these systems converted to s4 hana and then start replicating all the other systems transactions to that system and then on later stage they can actually remove all these you know written and systems and then start living with one system right that is one of the strategy and the other one could be that if it if their system is if the landscape is not that complex they completely move everything into just one single system it's it's kind of one of the strategies that they follow and yes. uh, most of the times i think it is temporary yeah yes yes so you see uh, just to add your point was you are completely correct so again in that case they need to decide between this and this okay so the example that you gave let's say if i go to this slide see if a customer has lot of different systems you can see these are two systems here and three systems here so customer has to decide whether they should go with this approach where they discontinue all the systems at one go initially itself and start using only one single system but if their current landscape is too complicated and it will take lot of time to discontinue and go for one only in that case they will temporarily go for the central finance option where they will continue to use their current systems and in real time they will replicate the data here to generate their reports but at one fine day when maybe all the systems are already upgraded to this they will stop or they will discontinue using the old systems right was yeah that that's correct girl. yeah because it it cannot be an end it cannot be like a final solution because you are generally like you're uh, kind of 100% replicating whatever your transactions are posted in the source system so you cannot live with that forever like it's more like uh, you know most of the time it's a temporary solution maybe for a year or two they want to run it with it and then eventually they'll sunset all the systems one by one it's like a step by step you know things that they want to do exactly so even uh, rather than simplification it will add more complicated if it is for many years so this is just a temporary setup yes okay was i think uh, is working in us on central finance or at least he is uh, uh, sorry sorry was can you just tell you you are working on the proposal right yeah i'm working on a few projects here um, we are actually you know responding to uh, you know um, rfps with the central finance in there so it's when we kind of put the strategies at different road maps that that we can actually go to uh, um, hana finance for some of the clients they are more interested in um, uh, as for uh, uh, central finance as a first step but eventually they wanted to move 100% to uh, hana as for hana finance so um, they don't want to immediately jump like you know into into uh, as for hana finance on day 1 so it's just like an intermediate approach we are we are suggesting them and they are and they are absolutely fine with that too so right okay any any other questions this was a good discussion this this could be the kind of discussion that we have then only we will be able to remember all these topics 
Gaurav, are you going to share this, uh, this PPT? Yes, yes, Amit. I will immediately share this PPT with you. Thank you. Yeah, Gaurav, Sandeep here. Yes, Sandeep. Yes, uh, so Gaurav, why it is called Central Finance? So is it only uh, for the financial module or over? Yes.